Walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala <coughs> alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad fil awwalin wa salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad fil akhirin wa salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad fil malayil a'la ila yawmiddin wa ba'du I pray you are over well, inshallah um, Alhamdulillah we have got to his perfect justice sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on page number 163 is that correct brother shuhab ustaduna shuhab aina anta um let me just drop a message to the group <coughs> alhamdulillah say that we're on um bismillah allahumma salli ala sayyidi muhammad allahu akbar Let's read the du'a in a way to ta'allum and ta'aleem wa tadhakkur wa tathkeer wa naf'a wa l'intifa' wa l'ifadza wa l'istifada wa l'hatha ala tamasuki bi kitabillah wa sunnati rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa du'a ilin huda wa dalalata al-khair ibtigha'a wa jihillahi wa mardatihi wa qurbihi wa thawabihi subhanahu wa ta'ala Rabbi zidni ilm al-nafi'ah رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي وبعده الحمد لله. So we've got to the his subtleness and perfect justice, right? Um, and um, justice. I am in a lesson. Somebody is asking for the link. Where is the link? Yes, you have. Where is the link for this class? Allahumma salli ala Sayyidi Muhammad. Maybe somewhere in the beginning, right? Um, Allahu Akbar. No, I couldn't. Is it this one here? No. We're done. Justice means to give people their rights without prejudice and to take people to task for their wrongs without favoritism or bias. The Prophet وسلم, was endowed with justice that was rooted in divine instruction and Quranic ethics. And from his youngest days, it was his natural disposition to be just. He took part in a covenant made by Quraysh to combat injustice and stand up for the oppressed, known as the Alliance of the Virtues. The word for alliance is uh, was a hilf, and um, the virtues from fudul, from fadl. And so here, um, this is, we studied this in the seerah in the early days of the life of the Prophet. So when you're studying the life of the Prophet, I think you can divide it into um, four parts. Before prophecy, and before birth, pardon me, then um, from birth up to his receiving the first revelation. Meccan period as part three, and then Medina Sharif or Medina period, part four. And so when we do the, what is it, from birth up to receiving revelation, this is one of the key events, okay, which is this Hilf al Fudul. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, later said of this pact, I witnessed in the house of Abdullah ibn Judan, a pact so excellent that I would not exchange my part in it for a herd of red camels. And if now in Islam I were called to it, I would gladly respond. <clears throat> and this shows you how important. Justice was to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam You know, this pact basically said that Look, there are And you know the story behind it That a man came to Mecca to sell some goods And he was from out of town And Abu Jahl, you know Or one of these Quraysh tyrants He took the goods of him And refused to pay his money Now, that's the backdrop, right? That's the story So, uh, and a foreign man is done over by you know, somebody in power and who has, you know, this standing in the community. And he turns to the people of Quraysh and um, the Prophet's uncle, Az Zubair, heard, you know, um, his plea. And so he took this to the elders in the council of the Quraysh and then it led to this help of food. So it, this is this is before the advent of Islam, but it's not it's not. You know, it doesn't go against what Islam teaches, right? It is part of Islam. You know, you don't need Islam to know that there's something called justice, right? Islam, alhamdulillah, gives us the sort of the complete path 
you know, the you know the A to Z of how to live our lives to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this one you can recognize by your aql, alhamdulillah, through the example of the Prophet. We have lots of lots of um different um examples, okay, uh, of his justice and how um justice should be carried out, you know, whether it's to do with his wives and whether it's to do with his friends whether it's to do with the ummah and so forth so here allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad you know this was more beloved to him that somebody gets their right then you know anything the dunya has to offer um, there's no way he would sell this opportunity you know you couldn't even put value to this opportunity where you can help somebody you know get their right back so um how can we apply this in our in our lives? Of course, there's lots of ways of doing this. You know, uh, from something simple as somebody steals somebody's parking spot. You know, something to do in the in the family where people are not being delivered their hukuk. Okay, but it has to start for me. You know, I need to start by delivering my uh, the rights of those who are around me who have rights over me. Okay, whether it's to do with my neighbours, uh, start from my from my own body. My, my, you know, my life that Allah has given to me, my health, my, you know, from there, then moving on to those around me, from my family, my children, my spouse, you know, my, uh, my parents, and then my relatives and so forth, you know. So there's lots and lots of places where we need to think about this and take ourselves to account, um, you know, uh, are we delivering justice or not? He saw Allah's room and then are speaking up for those who are being oppressed again so that could be in lots of different ways you know um we have it through petitions we have it through word of mouth you know we have it through action okay lots of different ways of how we can stand up against the oppressors whether it's to do with something international or domestic okay um subhanallah it's a massive massive it's a massive topic he saw Allah will maintain just as implied to his own family without giving consideration to social Standing the ties of king, when some men of the helpers wanted to forego their claim, the ransom of Abbas, the messenger of Allah, Sallallahu uncle, the Prophet Sallallahu did not approve of this and said, you should not remit, remit even a single dirham of it. He did not allow his daughter Zainab's husband to be set free without ransom. However, only because he was clearly too poor to ransom himself, be well aware of this. And Abbas, on the other hand, was known to be rich, so the Prophet ﷺ did not free him until he had paid his own ransom and the ransoms of those relatives of his who had been captured alongside him. So um, these are examples from the Sirah in the Battle of Badr. You know, these stories arise, okay, and there's a lot to take from them. Um, and then you've got since the Prophet's forgiveness enveloped all humanity, it is not surprising that his own son-in-law was also included in his forgiveness just like anyone else um, and so you, you see this is nice now because in the Shammai it doesn't delve into too much of the detail but the Sira does and then you might say now I want to learn the Sira because like who are these people like what's their story what what was the ransom for and all of these questions the answer to these questions are going to be found in a Sira book um, his subtle of justice was also manifested when he rebuked a man of the helpers for his mistreatment of his camel, <clears throat> which is an incredible story, you know, his he taught us how to be just to our mount, our animals, you know, and so Subhanallah, if you've got a, a pet, a cat or a or a budgie or a parrot, <clears throat> you might have a dog, you might have camels, you might have sheep, you might have cows. Subhanallah, you know, all of these creation of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You know, they have their rights, okay, and, and it's, you know, subhanAllah, the Prophet Sallallahu taught us that. We have an example in his sirah, not one example, many examples where we can look at that, you know, and somebody can take um, very important lessons from it. Saying, fear Allah in how you treat this beast, for he complained to me that you underfe was underfeed him and overwork him. He also commanded that two chicks be returned to their mother who had become frantic at their loss. In these things, it clearly man is clear. In these things, is clearly manifested the spirit of the Prophet in combating injustice, even for birds and beasts. So, you know, they have souls. They are the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So they are sacred. 
okay they are secretly because the Allah's put within them this incredible secret of his which is ruh okay you know nobody knows the reality of the ruh but it's inside these creations of Allah so it has you know it has sanctity and then they bring us so much benefit whether it's a camel or a chicken or a donkey or a horse you know all of these animals bring benefit you know it's kind of like pets the joy they bring into the lives of those who have them you know it's immeasurable unless you've, you've you know some th some things you won't know what they mean unless you've you've been in somebody else's shoes okay or you've had their journey right so this is this is this is it's, it's subjective it differs from one person to another Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala what the Shaykh Salman says he goes if you were to try to describe to somebody what a what is it a mango tastes like and um Shaykh Salman likes his mangoes subhanAllah he said um he goes you wouldn't be able to do it you know whatever you wrote however good however strong your language you know, may be however gifted you are when it comes to that you know the person when they finally drink the mango juice or eat a mango you know you can't do justice to the taste and the flavors that they are experiencing that whatever you wrote can't do it it's not possible and so subhanallah what a ni'mah from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is to be able to have these taste buds so one of the things that corona does is you know, people lose their taste buds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give shifa to all the sick. Lots of people, subhanAllah, this new, new variant of it is quite quite bad and deadly. SubhanAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give shifa to all the sick. Ya Rab, Bijal Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah, give them all of them shifa. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, lots of people, lots of families. It's widespread now, some in your families, I guess. Um, so, subhanAllah, keep everybody in your du'as, Ya Allah. Allahumma rabban nas. I think people need to start using the sunnah du'as. I love this du'as, subhanAllah. I learned in Damascus from my teachers where you take your right index finger and you put it wherever it hurts. Right? Wherever it hurts. And you say, Bismillah. <coughs> Bismillah. Bismillah three times. And then you say, look how powerful this du'a is. You say, Allahumma, oh Allah. Rabban nas. You know, Allah, the Lord of the people, Rabban Nas, Adhibil Bats, remove this this pain, this problem. Allah Rabban Athan, Washfi and the Shafi, give Shifa. You're the one who's Shafi, the Shifa is from you, right? And the Shafi, it's La Shifa, illa Shifa, a cure. There is no cure but your cure. And I'm putting my hand here because if somebody has a migraine, for example, I have some pain here. So, Bismillah, Bismillah, Bismillah. Allahumma rabban nas. Adhib al-ba's. Washfi anta shafi, ya Allah. You're talking to Allah, ya Allah. Give shifa. You're the one who's the shafi, the cure. Shifa'un la yugadiru saqalma. A shifa, a complete shifa. That leaves no trace of any sickness. So, memorize it. Use it. Use it. Use these du'as. And he would read it seven times. Three times Bismillah. And then Allahumma rabban nas. I, I love it. Oh Allah, the Lord of the people. It's very powerful, isn't it? Adhib al bas washfi anta shafi la shifa illa shifa shifa la yugadir saqma. The other thing you can do is um, perhaps use Quran. So one of my teachers, Sheikh Anas al Hibri, once I walked in <coughs> to um, his office and um, he was really slow to open the door and then when finally got to the door i realized my god he's quite badly ill and i said sheikh what's wrong and he went back and lie down on the sofa again and he said to me um i said should we cancel the lesson he goes no 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 don't cancel the lesson because read read because um read your quran so i would read to him a few pages and he asked me put your hand your uh, my right hand on his chest because he had chest pains and so I put my hat, right hand on his chest and I started to read and subhanAllah I read like, like a quarter of a juz or maybe even more and he, after that he just got up Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah the pain has gone and I was like SubhanAllah you know like I had never seen that in action so the Quran 
tells us, you know, it's a shifa, right? Um, and and but I had never seen that, right? It's lovely to see that in action, where you know how to apply. It. So if somebody's sick, you know, and you want to read on them, you know, put your hand on their chest or wherever they have this pain, and read Quran on them. Inshallah, through the barakah of the Quran, um, Allah will you know send down upon them a cure. Cure, Ya Rab. No. So this is um, this is that right. Another instance where he said Allah so where his salah and perfect justice was manifest was the occasion when Quraysh were concerned about the woman of the Makhzum clan who had stolen. Seeing that no one else would dare to do so, they asked Usama bin Zayd who was who was beloved to the Messenger of Allah so to plead the woman's case to the Messenger of Allah. So this is a beautiful example now because this happens a lot. You know, you know, on on government levels, right? On you know, the community level. Um, now, you know, yeah, Osama, you're close to the the prophet. Yeah, Osama, you are the the son of the prophet in those days, right? Um, yeah, I'll speak to your father, speak to your master, huh? And so here, Osama did so. So he went, but the prophet replied, "Do you intercede against one of the bounds set by Allah Almighty?" He then stood and addressed the people saying, the, the people who came before you only came to ruin because if one of their noblemen stole, they would leave him. Whilst if one of their weak folks stole, they would punish him. By Allah, even if Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad, stole, I would amputate her hand. SubhanAllah. This is again the justice of Sayyidina Muhammad. To make a difference, who? You know, Allah is before everybody. Every single Rishta that we have, Allah comes before of that. That's so powerful. Who do you love the most? God. Why? He created me. Yeah, this is why somebody's very sick and they're dying, right? They have a relationship with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They know they, you know, all their life they lived their life and they've, you know, felt the closeness of God and they've enjoyed their prayers and their worship to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They're looking forward to meeting their Lord Almighty, right? Why? Because this is not foreign. This relationship's not foreign. It's, you know, it's the closest, the greatest thing I have. And whatever I do, I do for God. I've lived my life for God because it was God who gave me life. Now, yes, I haven't seen Allah, but I've seen His work, Subhanahu wa Taala. And now I'm about to move from this temporary world to another. Ya Rabb. You know, I only know you as the most merciful. I only know you as the one who pardons, who forgives, who, you know, sends showers his bounty down upon his slaves. And I love you, Ya Allah. You know, I have my shortcomings. So that's that's so different to say somebody who has no relationship with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. This is why our teacher, dear teacher, and we never, I don't for sure can't do any justice to. His teachings, Allah bless him and you know, raise him and give us tawfiq to listen to him and, and apply it. Shasawa focuses on this a lot. You know, build your relationship with Allah by reading the Quran, by learning his name, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and by living the, the law that he's given to us. And it should have you know precedence, okay? Uh, rather priority part of me over everything that we have, and it should be given that. Um, so here another manifestation of his. Justice was the occasion when, as he was dividing some wealth, a man came to him and rudely demanded a share of it. As the Prophet was boarding him off, he struck him with a stick that um, that was in his hand and cut his face. Immediately he said, come and avenge yourself. Nay, said the man, I forgive you, a messenger of Allah. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barika wa sallam. Another occasion, I, don't, I actually don't know this occasion, right? So it's worth going back and looking at this. Um, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Let's just pull out the book, right? Because it's sometimes when you read the English Because I have poor Arabic and poor English It doesn't help, right? Um, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Kamalu adlihi So we're looking at his justice, right? So he said فَأَكَبَّ عَلَيْهِ فَطَعَنُهُ سَلَسَمْ بِعَرْجُونٍ كان مع فجرح وجهه ثم قال له تعال فاستقضي قال بل عفوت عنك يا رسول الله Okay, I got it now um, <coughs> So here you can see he didn't mean to hit him in the face Okay, uh, as far as I understand he was trying to ward him off and hit him But he asked him, you know, you know that he, 
obviously recognize what happened. So I said, take, take, was it take revenge? In the dunya before the akhirah, but he said, I fought it. But the point here is that he offered. So listen, you know, I've wronged you here. I didn't mean to hate you, but I have take. And this is something similar that happened in the Battle of Badr, right? But <laughs> we say, I think his name is Aswad. But it, there, it, it, you know, he, the Prophet poked him with a stick to tell him to line up. And um, he said, I want revenge because you've hurt me. So he said, take revenge. So he lifted his kameez up and he went and kissed him. So <coughs> another occasion when his salasim just was manifest was related by a man of the Confederate Confederate Arabs who said, I was walking behind the messenger of Allah on the day of Hunayn. I was wearing heavy shoes and I, and I trod on his foot with them. He wafted the lash he was carrying in my direction. I said, in the name of Allah, you hurt me. I spent the following night rebuking myself and saying, you hurt the messenger of Allah. And only Allah knows the night I spent. In the morning, a man came looking for me. And I said to myself, this is by Allah. Uh, it's the repercussion of what occurred yesterday. I went with him, sorely afraid. But when I came to the Prophet, he said to me, you trod on my foot yesterday and hurt me. And I wafted my lash at you. So here are 80 sheep for you. Take Allahumma salli ala Sayyidi Muhammad. So that is a nice story. We enjoyed that, right? Okay. So, but what do I take from this? What do I take from this? Sometimes I may raise my voice and people might get scared. So now, you know, give a kafara for that. How? Well, I'm sorry. But not just sorry. Khalas, come, let me go and treat you. Because we're human beings, we make mistakes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this, you know, um, personality to the Prophet and gave these characteristics to the Prophet. And this this is very human like, right? Okay. So I can relate to this. He's not just a prophet who is he's perfect, but these traits I can relate to. If he didn't experience this and he didn't show that emotion, I may never be able to relate to him. And so this is so beautiful. You get it. This is this is what's amazing about him, Sallallahu that I can relate to him. And you know what? SubhanAllah, I'm saying that. So my daughter, she's four months. She's lying on the ground, right? And my son, <coughs> who's turning five in two days' time, and he wants his birthday earlier. He wants it tomorrow. Okay. Um, and he he walks and goes towards the table. And he steps on her hand, right? She's a brave girl, mashallah, and she doesn't just cry, you know. Um, she's very, very strong and brave. But that hurt her. It really hurt her. And um, she started to cry, Bichari, and she cried a lot. And um, you can see she's in a lot of pain, but obviously, um, you know, she can't do much about it. <laughs> That, but you, you, that's an example of a baby, right? Who feels pain. Pain, this pain. Allah's put that. The soul feels the pain. Let me tell you something funny, right? She was pulling her own hair. <laughs> and she's crying. So her mother's crying. Why, why is she crying? What happened to her? But then she realized because she was holding her hair, she was pulling it. <laughs> she didn't know. Obviously, she's young, right? So subhanAllah, she's hurting herself but not knowing. Allahu Akbar. We learn from these things in our life, subhanAllah. You know, we make silly mistakes in life. We learn from them. Sometimes we don't realize what we're doing is harming us or hurting us or burning us and so forth. Allahu Akbar in, in, in how we, we learn. Inshallah, we learn these lessons sooner than later. Another manifestation of his system just as occurred in his final illness when he ascended the pulpit. I said, oh people, if there is any of you whose back I scorched and here is my back, and he may was it requit himself on it. Um, and if there is any of you whose wealth I took, then here is my wealth, and he may requit himself on, from it. And if there is any of you whose honor I reviled, then here is my honor, and he may requit himself of it. Let no man say I fear the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam will bear me a grudge, for it is not my nature, nor my way, nor my way, uh, to bear grudges. Indeed. The one of you I love the most is he is he who could claim from me what is rightfully his or pardon me that I may meet Allah with a clean conscience. A man stood up and said, A messenger of Allah, you owe me three dirhams. He suddenly replied, We do not belie anyone, nor ask him to swear, yet how is it that I owe you this? 
He said, remember one day a needy person passed you by and you told me to give him something. The Prophet said, pay him a fadl, addressing his nephew, the son of Al-Abbas. So here, um, you know, again, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, you know, we may forget things, we, but the point is that we, 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 we try our best, okay, to have a clean slate and human beings we will make lots of mistakes in our lives but as long as i'm trying and, and and if i mess up i try to fix that you know that scenario that situation then i think that's uh, that's that's where we want to be yeah at least in my conscience i know i haven't harmed anybody intentionally and if i have then i'll find a way to make up by giving them something out of charity or or a gift or a good word and so forth very beautiful very beautiful very beautiful book what do you reckon, guys? MashaAllah. It's very practical. Like, you, you can read out of Shama'il, and they're, they're long and they're detailed, right? So you could sometimes get lost in in the detail, okay? So you can come out at the end, and you're like, what did I take from this lesson? And it takes so much that you can't actually apply it. As for here, um, I feel like you, you take enough, you know, there's enough examples here, enough detail that I can walk away and start applying in my life now what's the date sir where are you guys allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad allahu akbar shuhab what's the date i found the calendar it is the seventh allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad so we'll stop here inshallah walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen better get used to write in 2021 now allahu akbar countdown to ramadan Ya Habibi Ya Rasulullah Beautiful Friday night people Salli ala Rasulullah Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad Lazy week when it comes to salawat I haven't hit my target but inshallah before tomorrow Inshallah we hit 10k inshallah <coughs> Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahabi jma'in Naam Allahu Akbar Okay, we're gonna read um, the line. Been missing so much, I forget what's next book. Next book. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wasallam. Page one eleven. Um, right at the end. Was aluk bi ma salak bi adu nabiyyuk wa sallam bi ma salak bi anbiya wa rasuluk wa mala inka tukal mukarrabu one twelve. صلى الله عليه مجمعين وسنك بما سألك بي أهل طاعتك أجمعين أن تصلي على محمد وعلى آل محمد عدد ما خلقت عدد ما خلقت من قبل أن تكون السماء مبنية والأرض مطحية والجبال مرسية والعدون منفجرة والأنهار منهمرة والشمس مضحية والقمر مضيئة والكواكب منيرة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد عدد علمك صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد عدد حلمك وصل على وصل على محمد وعلى آل محمد عدد ما أحصاه واللون محفوظ من علمك اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد عدد ما جرى به القلم في أم الكتاب عندك وصلي على محمد وعلى آل محمد من السماوات وصلي على محمد وعلى آل محمد من أرضك وصلي على محمد وعلى آل محمد من أما أنت خالقه من يوم خلقت الدنيا لا على من يوم خلقت الدنيا لا يوم القيامة اللهم صلي على محمد وعلى آل محمد عدد صفوف الملائكة وتسبيح وتقديس وتحميد وتمجيد وتكبير وتهليل من يوم خلقت الدنيا إلى يوم القيامة في كل يوم من الفمر اللهم صلي على محمد وعلى آل محمد عدد الصحاب الجارية والرياح والرياح الذارية من يوم خلق من يوم خلقت الدنيا لا يوم القيامة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد نعد كل قطرة تقدر من سماواتك إلى أرضك وما وما تقدر إلى يوم القيامة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد نعد ما هبت الرياح وعد ما تحركت الأشجار والأوراق والزروع وجميع ما خلقت في قرار الحفظ في قرار الحفظ في قرار الحفظ من يوم خلقت من يوم خلقت الدنيا لا يوم القيامة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد عدم القطر والمطر 
والنبات من يوم خلق الدنيا لا يوم القيامة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد عز النجوم في السماء من يوم خلق الدنيا لا يوم القيامة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد عز ما خلقت في بحارك السبعة مما لا يعلم إلا هو إلا أنت وما أنت خالق ولا يوم القيامة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد عز الرمل والحصى في مشارق الأرض ومغارب يا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد عدد ما خلقت من الجن والإنس وما أنت خالق إلى يوم القيامة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد عدد الفاس والفاضي والحاضي من يوم خلقت الدنيا إلى يوم القيامة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد عدد الطيران الجن والملائكة من يوم خلقت الدنيا إلى يوم القيامة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد عدد الطيور والهوام وعدد الروح ولا كان في مشارق المغاربة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد عدد الأحياء والأموات اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد عدد ما أظلم عليه الليل وأشرق عليه النهار من يوم خلق الدنيا إلى يوم القيامة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد عدد من يمشي على رجلين ومن يمشي على أربع من يوم خلق الدنيا إلى يوم القيامة اللهم صل على محمد عدد من صلى عليه من الجن والإنس والملائكة من يوم خلق الدنيا إلى يوم القيامة اللهم صل على محمد عدد من لم يصلي عليه اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما يحب أن يصلى عليه اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما ينبغي أن يصلى عليه اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد حتى لا يبقى شيء من الصلاة عليه اللهم صل على محمد في الأولين وصل على محمد في الآخرين اللهم صل على محمد في الملائل على لا يوم الدين ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحزب السادس اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وعطي الوسيلة والفضيل والدرجة الرفيع وبعث مقام محمود الذي وعدت وإنك لا توفيق الميعاد اللهم عظم شانه وبين برهانه وابرج حجته وبين فضيلته وتقبل شفاعته في أمتي واستعملنا بسنتي يا رب العالمين ويا رب العرش العظيم اللهم يا رب احشرنا في زمرة وتحت لبائه واسقنا بكأسه وانفعنا بمحبة آمين يا رب العالمين اللهم يا رب بلغ عنا أفضل السلام وجزي أفضل ما جازيت بالنبي عن أمتي يا رب العالمين اللهم يا رب إن يسنك أن تغفر لي وترحمني وتتوب علي وتعافيني من جميع البلاء والبلوى الخارج من الأرض والنازل من السماء إنك على كل شيء قد برحمتك وأن تغفر للمؤمن المؤمنات والمسلمين المسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات رضي الله ورضي الله عن أزواج الطاهرات الأمهات المؤمنين ورضي الله عن أصحاب العالم أئمة الهدى وأصحاب الدنيا والتابعين وتاب التاب لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين والحمد لله رب العالمين الله اللهم رب الأرواح والأجساد البالية سلك بطاعة الأرواح الراجعة لأجسادها وبطاعة الأجساد المبتئمة بعروقها وبكلماتك النافذة فيهما أخذك الحق منهم والخلائق بين يديك ينتظرون فصل قضائك ويرجون رحمتك ويخافون عقابك أن تجعل النور في بصري والذكرك بالليل والنهار على لساني وعملا صالحا فارزقني اللهم صل على محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وبارك على محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم اللهم اجعل صلواتك وبركاتك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما جعلت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات المسلمين والمسلمات اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله عدد ما حاط بعلمك أحصى كتابك والشهيدات به ملائكتك صلاة 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 دائمة تدوم بدوام ملك الله الله من يسلك بإسمائك العظام ما علمت منه ما لم أعلم بالأسماء التي سميت بها نفسك ما علمت منها ما لم أعلم أن تصلي على سيدنا محمد عبدك ونبيك ورسولك عدد ما خلقت من قبل أن تكون السماء مبنية والأرض مدحية والجبال مرسية والعيون منفجرة والأنهار منهمرة والشمس مشرقة والقمر مضيئة والكواكب مستنيرة والبحار مجرية 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 والأشجار مثمرة اللهم صل على محمد عدد علمك وصل على محمد عدد حلمك وصل على محمد عدد كلماتك وصل على محمد عدد نعمتك وصل على محمد عدد جودك وصل على محمد عدد سماواتك وصل على محمد عدد عرضك 
وصلي على محمد عبدنا ما خلقت في سبع سماوات من ملائكتك وصلي على محمد عبدنا ما خلقت في أرضك من الجن والإنت وغيرهما من الوحش والطير وغيرهما وصلي على محمد عبدنا ما جرى به القلم في علم غيبه فما يجري به لا يوم القيامة وصلي على محمد عبدنا القطر والمطر والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة إلى حضرة النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم وإن نغدوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله مصدقهم شراط الذين أمت عليهم وإذن أمم عليهم آمين الحمد لله You are well? Everybody good inshallah? Everybody is healthy? No underlying health issues inshallah? الحمد لله يا رب What do we have? MashaAllah. One, seven, seven. Yep. I didn't move my mark. Allahumma salli alayhi. Ya Rabb, bijay Imam al-Busiri, Ya Allah, shifa to the sick, Ya Rabb, especially our families, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Malik al-Bidhi. Stop his round. Dalin, Amin. وللتماس تغين الدارين من يديه إلا استلمت الندى من خير مستلمي And never, I, never have I sought wealth in both worlds from his hand without receiving largesse from the best of givers صلى الله عليه وسلم The author, Allah have mercy upon me, essentially says Never does one aspire to something in this world and the next entertain Next and entertain hope that Allah will combine both for him Taking the Prophet وسلم, as an intermediary or intermediary or seeking intercession through his rank, but that they will generally speak and attain his desire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, you know, gives through this um, the most blessed of wasitas. Get it? Most blessed of wasitas. Yeah, I remember hearing from Sheikh Tawfiq al Buti, Hafidullah Ta'ala, he was speaking about his grandfather. And Sheikh Mullah, that when they were in Madin to Munawwara, he got very sick. And he goes, I went and made dua and wasila through the Prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him shifa. They won't, they won't, you know, they were, what is it, the heel was very sick, so they didn't expect him to survive. So here, um, that wasila is there and it's present. The couplet is akin to saying, No one seeks wealth in both abodes from the hand of Allah's emissary, وسلم, except that he. Attained his hope and desire. The reason why the author links the verb to himself is that he realized it through direct experience and thus speaks about it with certainty as tried and true. And this is what the, the whole Buddha is about that it is somebody who's paralyzed, you know, and they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, through the rank of the Messenger of Allah. So Allah and this entire book from its beginning to the end is about the Prophet and about his rank. So they wrote something about Allah's most. Blessed, you know, Allah's rahmah to the world and sought that, um, you know, that means to shifa that he wanted ultimately wanted to shifa a cure from his uh, paralysis. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him th- th- that shifa that he was looking for, and it happened through Sayyidina Muhammad. So, here, um, what does he say next? No one seeks uh, that's the, the reason why the author we've done that part because the Prophet. Is the supreme means al wasil al uzma in in these areas of pursuit, and it's through him that they are obtained, and by his exalted rank that they are acquired. The author describes them as coming directly from the Prophet's hand and falling under his dominion. It is narrated, "Seek a means of approach to Allah by my rank, for in His sight my rank is immense." And you can see this, Sheikh Abdullah Tariq says this hadith is without basis. So here, um, that's. You know, that's going to be mawdu, right? But it may, might be worth looking at, see if there's a chain. Sometimes you find a chain, sometimes you find 
um, something that gives it some strength. So as it states there, we'll stick to that. It is also narrated, if anyone desires to ask Allah for a need, let him begin and conclude his request with the prayers upon me, for Allah accepts the request that falls um, between the two prayers, a salawat, and he is too generous to ignore what befalls between them. And so the salawat is guaranteed acceptance, so whatever comes in between, um, and this is, you know, Allah subhanahu wa karam, this good opinion we have of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and this is really cool, because he said here, this is not a hadith, but a saying of Abu Sulaiman al-Darani. Good to know that. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala said, when one of you wishes to ask for the fulfillment of a need, let him begin by praising him, sallallahu and lauding him as he merits, then invoking blessings upon our patron Muhammad and then uh, and then present his need. Um, you know, we find in Salatul Istikhara you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you praise the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then you make your dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You find in Salatul Janaza, you you know, you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you send salutations upon the Prophet, then you make your dua of maghfirah for the deceased. So we we have even in our own salah, you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through that tahiyyat. Then you send salutations upon the Prophet and then you put forward the dua that Allah has taught us to ask Rabbi Ja'ani. And so here, that's you know, that's something to do to, to follow. You know that I have a pressing need. You know, start praising Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Recognize, you know, Allah Manta Rabbi La Ilaha Illa Anta Khalaqtani Wa Ana Abduk. I praise Him as is befitting Him. And the befitting praise is the praise that we get on the tongue of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then send salutations upon the Prophet and then make your request. So these narrations apply to worldliness, and we have already mentioned the story of Ibn Jala, who thanks who thanks to the blessings of the food he received from the Prophet's hand or hand was absolved of the need for food and drink. And this was a story that we related just on the page before. Um was it on page one seven five or around there, okay? Maybe just before 173. So we read that um, the last lesson that we had, which was uh, actually it's very important to go back to that because a lot of us have needs as we speak. And this wonderful salat um, that we had uh, on page 175, was it? Um, what's the Dru called again? Is it? Um, what was it? What did we say? This was last lesson, remember? Um, Tanjila. Is it Tanjila? Is that how we say it? I'll find it here now. Allahumma salli ala Sayyid Muhammad. Tanjina. Allahumma nunajina. Tanjina. La hawla la quwata la. Went absent. I think my mind went somewhere else because I, I turned to my phone and I, I saw a message and then it went somewhere else. This is why I shouldn't go there. But then I tried to check Tanjina there as well. Allahumma salli ala Sayyid Muhammad. Okay, good. We're okay up to that point. Um, so here... As for uh, as for needs pretending to the hereafter, if one had gained only worldly and next worldly honor reserved for those who praise and invoke blessings upon the Prophet, that would suffice him. This strengthens, you know, what we're doing. Our quest to reach ten thousand salawat upon the Prophet on a weekly basis and cement that to the extent where it becomes a part parcel of our daily liturgies. Okay, is because look. The rank for those who send lots of salawat upon the Prophet is immense, and everything else will come through that, inshallah ta'ala. So, the Prophet said, Jibril came to me and said, Are you not pleased that your Lord, the exalted and sublime, says, Truly, no one of your nation invokes blessings upon you without my invoking ten blessings upon him, and no, no one of your nation invokes salutations upon you without my invoking ten salutations upon him? And in another narration, whoever invokes one blessings upon you, Allah will invoke. Upon him ten blessings and like thereof And whosoever invokes a single blessing upon you Allah will record for him Ten good deeds face Ten bad deeds And raise him by ten spiritual degrees If you have Take a picture of that nice one Please send it to me Allah bless you um, Again You see The barakah of salawat Upon the Prophet Sallallahu So if I'm somebody Who's reading ten thousand salawat You know That's ten thousand Good deeds um, You know Ten thousand bad deeds Removed and 10,000 stations raised. Allahu Akbar. Now, how are you supposed to catch somebody who is reading so much salawat, right? You can't. So whoever reads the most has the highest stations. There are numerous hadith reports that speak of Allah 
invoking ten blessings upon anyone who invokes a single blessing upon the emissary of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa narrated by a Muslim and others, Qadi Abu Abdullah al-Bilali said, know that a blessing from Allah is mercy. And for whoever Allah gives a single portion of mercy, it will be better for him than the word and all it contains. And that comes obviously through sending salutations upon the Prophet. And what then is one to say about a person who receives ten mercies? How many afflictions and tribulations are averted because of them? And how many subtle graces and blessings are obtained by virtue of their blessings? Sheikh ibn Atar, radiallahu ta'ala, ibn Atar, Allah, may Allah be pleased, and said, Whoever invokes a single blessing upon the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah will suffice him for his world, you know, after worldly concerns. So how much more for the one who invokes ten blessings upon him? Ibn Shafi said, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's eminence is so vast that one who invokes blessings upon him receives this immense portion. For when would you when for when would you receive blessings from Allah upon you otherwise? Had you spent your entire life performing every act of obedience, and had Allah then sent upon you a single blessing, that single blessing would outweigh all of the acts of obedience you performed throughout your entire life. That is because you invoke blessings upon the Prophet ﷺ according to your capacity. Right? But Allah sends blessings upon him according to his lordship. And this is speaking of a single blessing. So that, um, so what can one say if Allah sends ten blessings upon you for every blessing that you invoke? Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. This is why we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him, Ya Rabb, you reward your prophet as is befitting. And you send salutations upon him as is befitting. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Regarding the meaning of the couplet, the author is saying that he never sought wealth in this world or hereafter from the Prophet Sallallahu hands. In other words, he never sought through the Prophet Sallallahu to be granted while being through having sufficient wealth in this world and safety from illnesses and afflictions and never sought through him wealth in the hereafter by having immense reward and pleasure of the Majestic King save that he received it and procured, proc- was it procured it and it reached him from the best hand that gives the hand of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he received those things by virtue of the Prophet ﷺ and then and by seeking a means of approach through him. The author describes them as if they were from the Prophet. ﷺ. And since blessings are usually received in the hand, the author says from his hand figuratively and means that he received them from the Prophet. ﷺ. In speaking about what he obtained, the author uses the word stilam, which is used figuratively to describe receiving. And he states the blessings and generosity he received in his, as largest was taken from the best of givers, meaning from the Prophet's noble hand, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَإِنَّمَا أَنَا قَاسِمٌ وَاللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ تَعَالَى يُؤْطِي As it comes in the Sahih Hadith, Verily, I am the distributor and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who um, gives it. الْمُؤْطِي يُؤْطِي okay? So here, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad on this incredible rank. Uh, we should stop here inshallah people and i think next time what we'll do is maybe we'll i think it might be a good idea to mix it around so um tend to get tired near the end so maybe next time we start with the buddha and then we finish with the shema that might be a good good call what do you reckon guys Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Jazakallah khair We'll stop here We'll start Allah ala Sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala alayhi wa sallam We could finish with salawat That could be a good call as well We'll think about it Keep me in your du'as Keep my parents in your du'as They're not well um, My lots of relatives My sister-in-law My niece Ya Latif Lots of people not well Ya Rab Ya Al-Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ya Allah And this beautiful night Ya Allah Give shifa to every sikh of this ummah Ya Allah Physical, spiritual, mental Ya Allah Fatiha Ila hadratin Nabi Alayhi Wasallam Bismillahirrahmanirrahim